Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us for Phosphorus Science Now. I'm Matt Schultz with the Sustainable Phosphorus Alliance. Next time it rains, think about what happens to all the water that hits your city. If not well managed, stormwater can carry pollutants from the city streets and landscapes to nearby water bodies, and that includes excess loads of nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus. Cities spend a lot of money building infrastructure to manage that stormwater, including implemented what are called Infrastructure Best Management Practices, or BMPs. These measures include such things as installing permeable pavement that reduces flows or planted planting vegetated buffer strips that filter certain chemicals from the water. A recent environmental science and technology paper looks at how some of these BMPs affect the concentrations of phosphorus and nitrogen in stormwater and how the effectiveness of these practices might change in the context of differing uh, regional climates. We were joined by two of that paper's authors, Drs. Tony Perillari and Isabel Horvath from Marquette University, to discuss their findings. Well, Tony and Isabel, thanks so much for joining us for Phosphorus Science Now. Well, thank you for having us. Uh, we've been pretty negligent on this channel talking about stormwater, so it was really good to see your paper. It was a very interesting um, perspective, and um, I'd like you, to, if you would, to tell me a bit about your team that put this together. Sure. So my name is Tony Parolari. I'm an assistant professor in civil construction and environmental engineering at Marquette University, and this work was led by a PhD student uh, in my lab who actually just defended her thesis a couple of weeks ago, Isabel Horvath, and she's here with us today. Um, our other collaborators are uh, Brooke Mayer, who's uh, a professor here at Marquette University, and also a member of the STEP Center, and then a postdoc, uh, Kun Zhang, who recently left Marquette University uh, for a faculty position at Seattle University. Great, and who funded the work? Yeah, so this work was funded by the Fund for Lake Michigan, which is a nonprofit here in Wisconsin. And we also received funding from the Department of Education uh, for a graduate research fellowship that funded Isabel. Great. And congratulations, Isabel, on your defense, too. Thank you um, so much. Yeah, sure. Uh, great. So if you could walk us through the details of the paper, that would be great. Um, sure. So... So this particular paper was motivated by a confluence of factors. And so one is that uh, non-point source nutrient pollution uh, continues to be a problem and impacting surface waters like lakes and rivers. You know, one important impact that we've all seen on the news are harmful algal blooms that are driven by excess nutrients in surface waters. Um, and so one of the solutions that uh, cities and stormwater utilities have chosen to address non-point source pollution is green infrastructure. And there's been a relatively rapid adoption of green infrastructure for stormwater treatment across the country, uh, but there still remains a large uncertainty in the performance of green infrastructure and its ability to treat nutrients. And that uncertainty is combined with you know, uncertainties of climate change. And so we were really interested in, you know, one, how does uh, storm, how do stormwater BMPs treat nutrients and how might the climate influence uh, that stormwater treatment? And so that convergence of factors sort of led us to our two research questions. How do nitrogen and phosphorus concentrations change in stormwater BMPs? And then does uh, the climate impact how BMPs affect nitrogen and phosphorus concentrations as stormwater is moving through the BMPs. Uh, so Isabel will give uh, an overview of the methodology that we used uh, and the main results from the paper. Sure. So to tackle this question, we used a statistical meta-analysis. So what is statistical ana analysis? It's just this way to look at multiple different treatment systems and be able to come up with an aggregate answer about how all of those treatment systems treat across the spectrum. So we looked at four different nutrient factors, a dissolved inorganic nitrogen, a total nitrogen, dissolved inorganic phosphorus, and total phosphorus, and pulled all of that data from the International Stormwater BMP database. 
where we were interested in both influent concentrations or the concentrations of nutrients coming into stormwater treatment systems and the effluent concentrations. And that would allow us to examine how those concentrations shift through the BMP. Great, Isabel, just quick question. So you uh, focused on uh, the inorganic fraction um, because that's the most bioactive uh, fraction that would drive algal blooms, et cetera. Is that right? Right, correct. Yeah. Great. So over the course of this process, looking at all these different BMPs across the U.S., we found about 91 BMPs that had the data we were interested in. Those were spread out across 15 different states in the U.S. and gave us a variety of different management types to look at. So we looked at each of the different BMPs first on an individual level, and that's what we've got on this map on the right here, where we break down the four different nutrients that we're interested in and have this marker, this point, showing the degree of change in concentration through each of those BMPs, where those smaller points show where we have a low weight and maybe that site didn't have a lot of observations and they were highly variable, and a high weight or a site that contributed a lot to the overall score, had a lot of observations that were more reliable. So looking at these four different maps, we kind of get this initial takeaway where our top two maps that dissolved inorganic nitrogen and then total nitrogen have more of those shades of yellow or green. And that shows in this MD value that we label below each map, which means the mean difference or the aggregate change in concentration of those nitrogen levels through all of the BMPs that we were looking at. And with that negative MD value, we see that there's this net treatment through the system or this negative change in concentration. But if you shift your eyes to those bottom two maps, we kind of see more of this orange shading and these red dots start to come up. And that's reflected in the positive MD or mean differences where we see an increase in the concentrations across all the BMPs in the US. Now, the next kind of question is to dig a little deeper into that climate aspect that we were interested in this paper. So kind of on the background of these maps, you see climate mapped out as either being labeled as a dry climate or a wet climate. And on the box plots on the left, we dig into that by showing first these gray box plots which show all of the BMPs or every single green and red dot on the right, and then break those down into just the wet climate BMPs or those that are on the green part of the map, and then the dry climate BMPs or those in the orange or beige part of the map. And this is where we start to see a segregation in the way that BMPs are changing nutrient concentrations, where we saw a significant difference where there was higher concentration leaching of dissolved inorganic phosphorus and total phosphorus um, in dry climates than we saw in wet climates. Even though there was this overall shift of leaching across the board, that dry climate tended to be more severe. Then we were also interested in looking at that ratio of the dissolved inorganic phosphorus or nitrogen to the total ratio because um, this kind of gives us some information about the speciation of the nutrients, and then looked a little bit at the nitrogen to phosphorus ratio, where we see a general shift towards dissolved inorganic phosphorus and a general shift towards lower N to P ratios or more phosphorus than nitrogen in the effluent of stormwater than in the influent. So next we wanted to explain or explore some of the different possibilities of why we're seeing this observation of higher concentrations of phosphorus and effluent than influent. So in the first ways we did this is by looking at the influent concentrations themselves and breaking down those concentrations by wet and dry climates, where we see across the board that these dry climates tend to have higher concentrations for all four of the nutrients that we were looking at. Then another thing we considered is the type of BMP that we were looking at, where this analysis looked at three different BMPs that were selected because they're all known to leach nutrients and they all have vegetation and soil as their kind of treatment uh, mechanisms. But we noticed that one of the BMP types was a lot less prevalent in dry climates, and that was grass strips, where the other two types, bioretention and grass whales, were pretty ubiquitous across wet climates. So it's hard to attribute whether the pattern we're seeing is something that's strictly climate driven or maybe climate is driving it through higher influent concentrations or is there a divergence by BMP type where we just see underrepresentation of some poor performing BMPs in wet climates. So Dr. Parlari, if you wanna take it away from there to wrap up the paper. Sure, thank you, Isabel. 
Um, so just to wrap up the takeaways from this study, you know, we find that uh, the changes in stormwater uh, nutrient concentrations through BMPs depend on some combination of the climate, uh, the influent stormwater composition, and the type of BMP that's implemented for treatment. And so generally, we found that the P or the phosphorus concentrations were increasing through BMPs, and that increase was higher in dry climates. Uh, but the change in N concentrations was inconclusive. And so we see a need for, for more data uh, on the nitrogen side. Uh, what could be driving more phosphorus release in dry climates? Uh, the stormwater nitrogen and phosphorus concentrations themselves in the influent are higher in dry climates. Um, and the, there are uh, uh, distributions of these BMPs in the wet and dry climates that might be affecting the statistics. Uh, one being that the, the P concentration increase was highest for bioretention and bioretentions were uh, overrepresented in the dry climate data. And that was the last bullet. I don't know. You can great. Yeah. Edit so that out. Um, oh. oh, can I say one more thing? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, so to kind of wrap everything up um, and going back to our original motivation, we're very interested in how climate change will affect the ability of stormwater infrastructure to perform both from a uh, flood control perspective and also from a water quality perspective. And so we think this research takes a first necessary step toward understanding how nutrient treatment will change in future climates. Great, yeah, I appreciate that. And so one question I had, and I think you got to this a bit in the paper was, um, you've looked a lot at the concentration mm -hmm. of nutrient coming out. Um, what about the volume? So are, are, is the total load coming out of these BMPs more or less uh, with respect to phosphorus? Yeah, that's a really great question that we've done more work to uh, to answer. And so by and large, these stormwater BMPs reduce the stormwater volume. And because of that, there's a corresponding reduction in the phosphorus load. This particular analysis, like you said, focuses on the concentration and so it tells us something about the treatment process within the BMP, but not about the load reduction. And so we're now continuing this research to look at this comparison between concentration and load and to see if we can understand further what processes are active and uh, how the BMPs are performing. Great. So the take home here would not be don't implement these BMPs because they'll increase the phosphorus loads. It's more, you know, this is complicated and we need to think about how the ratios are changing and how those are going to impact waters and et cetera, et cetera. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. The takeaway should not be don't implement the BMPs because we know that they do a really good job at volume reduction and peak flow reduction. Uh, I think one important takeaway is that there is still some uncertainty on the concentration side. Um, but I think you could go one step further and uh, consider that the concentration in the effluent is contributing to, you know, the amount of nitrogen phosphorus that's available in the surface water. Um, and so there may be some implication for concentrating it in the stormwater effluent. Great. I appreciate that. Well, thanks to both of you for taking the time to join us for Phosphor Science Now. Absolutely. It was yeah, a pleasure. You're very welcome. Thank you for having us.